Today's video is sponsored by MPP. Welcome to a very windy Istanbul. There's a storm last night. There's still hell of a wind going on. And the waves are crashing on the shore. So I hope the audio is not too bad. But Jupiter, which is right there, reached opposition yesterday. And this is super exciting for two main reasons. The first is that when a planet reaches opposition, it's at its closest point to Earth on its orbit. So Jupiter is currently a little bit bigger in the sky, and that also means it's gonna be easier, fingers crossed, to capture its Galilean moons next to it as well. Now the other awesome thing when a planet is in opposition is that it's opposite the sun. So when the sun is rising in the east, Jupiter is setting in the west, or when the sun is setting in the west, Jupiter is rising in the east. This means the planet's gonna be low on the horizon during the hours of twilight, which makes it easier to capture with a foreground subject because there's some really nice ambient lighting. Now, there's still a lot of things that can go wrong, <laughs> so stick around. All right, so I'm set up with the Moon Bazooka, the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens, Sony a7 IV. My current settings are 0.5 seconds, f6.3, ISO 640. These settings might change because the light is about to change very quickly. And I'm just gonna do a time lapse of still photographs with a photograph every two or three seconds. And there's a big ass cruise ship in the way. I'm not sure if I like it. The wind has been a little bit of an issue. There's definitely some camera shake. I'm gonna try and find some rocks to put on top of my tripod. And I've just taken a test shot. Three of four Galilean moons are currently visible. But I'm not sure if that's still gonna be the case the closer we get to sunset because the photograph that I really want is like one or two minutes before the moment of sunrise. And I'm not sure if the sky is gonna to be too bright to be able to see Jupiter's moons. I guess we'll find out soon enough. So unfortunately the moons had disappeared from view by the time Jupiter entered the frame and Jupiter itself disappeared behind some invisible cloud. Oh and I didn't see that boy bobbing around in the foreground when I set up in the dark. So there's two things working against me here. The first is the brightness of the backdrop of sky. So it was way too bright for the moons to be clearly visible. Fortunately, with every day that passes, Jupiter is gonna set four minutes earlier and also the sun is going to rise a few minutes later as well. So by the time Jupiter gets in the frame and next to the tower, it's going to be darker and darker with each attempt from here on out. And the second big issue is the weather. Now, even though the forecast was perfect and the skies look perfectly clear, there was cloud that wasn't even visible in the photographs, which swallowed up Jupiter. So the weather really needs to be perfect. And the big issue here is that when something is low on the horizon, you need clear skies for miles and miles. It's not the same as having like a little gap in the clouds above you. You need no clouds and very little moisture for miles and miles and miles because you're looking through a much longer path of Earth's atmosphere. And there's just way more chance of a cloud blocking that line of sight. And the worst thing about that is that it's completely out of my control and I only have a limited time where I can get this photograph. All right, so it's time for attempt number two. Nice 6 a.m. start again. <laughs> Thankfully, there's no cruise ship in the foreground. This time, it looks a lot better. And I've also moved myself slightly so that the, the boy that's in the water is not bobbing around in the foreground. I didn't see that last time when I set up, but I've moved position slightly. It still looks okay. Jupiter's moons are currently visible. They're not super bright. It does seem to be a bit of cloud on the horizon, so I'm a little bit worried. And uh, yeah, T minus 12 minutes. So I'm going to set up the time lapse and fingers crossed. 
So yet again, the moons had disappeared before they entered the frame and Jupiter also disappeared behind some invisible cloud again. So this isn't going to be as easy as I thought it was. Now if you're wondering how I planned this image, stick around to the end of the video where I share the app that I use and I'll also point you in the direction of a useful video. And as I mentioned, I was shooting with the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens, which I first picked up like seven years ago. I'm going to affectionately call this my moon bazooka. But back then I was shooting with a Canon 60, the Canon mount version of the lens. But then I switched from Canon to Sony. And when I did that, I had to do a huge swap of all my lenses. So I basically sold the Canon mount version to the sponsors of today's video, MPB. It's super easy. Just follow the link in the video description. Let them know what gear you're interested in trading in. Let them know what condition it's in and you'll get an instant quote online. If you're happy with that quote, I'm pretty sure you will be, you can arrange free collection from your address at a date of your choosing. You don't even have to leave your house. It's so easy and simple and straightforward it is. Once they've received the gear, they inspect it very quickly and you also get paid very quickly as well. So I then used that money to buy the Sony mount version when that came out and I've been loving it just as much as I did on day one when I got this lens. So if you have any gear lying around that you haven't used for a while, maybe it's been collecting dust on a shelf or in a drawer somewhere, head on over to MPB by following the link in the description, get an instant quote online, and then decide what you're gonna do with the freed up funds. If you're like me, you're gonna get new gear, or maybe you wanna fund a photography adventure somewhere far afield. Anyway, it's time for bed because I think tomorrow morning might just be my last chance at getting this shot. All right, so it's attempt three. I'm pretty exhausted right now, but it's a beautiful morning. The sea is very calm. The sky seems to be very clear. There's some video of Jupiter, and it's definitely the clearest I've seen it out of the three attempts. There's no cruise ship blocking my view in Galataport. There is a cruise ship there, but it's not blocking the view of the tower. There's a sense of optimism in the air. Everything just feels good right now. And I've probably got another 10 to 15 minutes until it's in my frame. A little bit excited. I'm also excited because this might be my last opportunity to do this photograph. Looking at the weather, I don't think there's going to be another clear morning and next week I leave the country, well, in five days I leave the country for a couple of weeks, so this might just be my last chance. And there it is, the shot that I had planned and visualized finally captured. I love the subtle twilight light, the harmony between the blue and the yellow hues, the reflection on the calm waters, and those little signs of life of people waking up to start their day. I must admit, I was a little bit gutted about the scaffolding on the roof of the tower. It got more and more with each of my attempts, but hey, I guess I can always capture this image again next year. Oh, and there was also a fourth attempt. It's pretty damn cold this morning, but I've been given one more opportunity before I leave the country. This time, Jupiter's gonna be lined up with the tower whilst it's pretty much nighttime, not twilight. But because the foreground is so illuminated, it doesn't seem as if that's gonna be a problem. Oh my, what? Jupiter's just disappeared. <laughs> Oh, damn it.
Oh, Jupiter's already disappeared. <laughs> So if you're curious how I planned this shot, I used an app called Planet Pro. It's very similar to PhotoPills, but it has a few unique features. And one of those is the ability to select a planet or a comet, a particular star, or even a deep sky object as the line on the map. So it's very similar to planning a telephoto moonshot, except this time the line on the map shows the position of Jupiter at a particular date and time. The other awesome thing is that when you use the virtual reality mode, it also shows up in there. So I can see that Jupiter's in the frame. I can see how big the tower's going to look at 600 mil. So I'm confident that the tower is going to fit inside my frame. And I pretty much know how the image is going to look before I've captured it, apart from the odd cruise ship or scaffolding surprise. It doesn't show the Galilean moons. So for the position of those, you can use another app like Stellarium, for example, because they change just so quickly. Every time I tried, they were just completely different. So yeah, if you're interested to know more of a Planet Pro, check out this video, which I made recently. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.